Today, I'm going to be explaining the most corrupt backrooms levels of all time. These are the most volatile and glitchy and unpredictable places that you might find yourself in through your journey in the backrooms. And lucky for you, I'm going to be telling you how to escape them. Because trust me, you're going to want to get out as fast as you can. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. And let's hop into it, shall we? So, the broken backrooms level is classified as a class death zone, and it has multiple environmental hazards that make it dangerous to even be in. The level really can't be considered a level, because it's so fragmented and shattered and glitchy that it expands outside of what we would normally consider a level. It's just a massive wasteland of corrupted images, planes, data, and other things that our tiny human brains can't even begin to comprehend. Even though it's hard to describe, I'm gonna try it anyway. So the broken looks like a kaleidoscope, kind of, and it's extremely unstable everywhere you look. The architecture and the shapes here don't make any sense to our brains, and they don't follow the normal shapes and patterns that we know of. The terrain itself of the level is made out of broken, swirling matter, and you can actually walk on this terrain, even though it's glitchy and warping, but who knows how that's even possible. The level is very colorful and very vibrant, and the further you walk into it, the worse it'll get for you. Just looking at the spaces around you will make you start to go insane just from seeing what you're looking at. Just seeing everything crumble and warping won't help your sanity either. Now, some people call the broken a splintered plane of existence. Kind of like a reality that went too far and became so corrupt that you can't even tell what it is anymore. It became so digitized that it's not even real. The strange colors and shapes and movements and reality bending things are not the only dangers here though, because there's actually a noise that's constantly blasting full volume on this level. The noises are coming from literally everywhere, but it's like this amplified, disturbing, bass-boosted sound that you could probably think of what it sounds like. I mean, just look at the picture of this level and listen to what you would imagine a noise would sound like there, and that's what it would be. There are also objects in this level that flow float through the ground and the sky, and they come back up and go everywhere. It doesn't make any sense. The wiki dot describes the level as a place that you can't even fathom or begin to understand because of how corrupted and how laggy it is. Ironically, there are actually structures here in the level as well, but the only problem is that they can change shape and are devoid of any actual material. They're just warped atoms, I guess. So you might see a pyramid or something, but then you can go right up to it and walk directly through it or glitch beside it and you won't even see it again. It'll just disappear. On the horizon of the level, you can see an effect that is kind of like that one from Minecraft when you're loading in new chunks of the world. So if you keep walking, you'll see the world build on itself, which must mean that this level has the ability to load new and infinite parts of itself, which is crazy. The newer the location, the more chaotic and broken it'll be. And for that reason, it's said that you shouldn't wander into this level at all, unless you're insane. Some people think that this level has some kind of relationship with the backrooms as a whole, a sort of symbiotic relationship. Like the backrooms might feed off of this place's unstable and hostile energies, and it might use those energies to create entities or other levels that we know about. Who knows? Now, some of the places found in the Broken kind of resemble other locations and levels and landscapes from other backrooms levels and from real life, except these are non-linear, gross, conglomeration, glitchy things of that real thing. So there could be what looks like a city, but it's just warping and glitching and floating around. But again, that's all just a theory. A backrooms theory. See what I did there? Others who don't believe in that theory that I just talked about believe that this place is just a bizarre, random, meaningless plane of reality that doesn't have a purpose or a meaning. So they pretty much think it doesn't mean anything. Personally, I like the first theory that the backrooms draws this dark, magical energy from this level to make other levels itself. But let me know your theories in the comments. Pretty interested to see what y'all have to say. If you, for some reason, want to come here, you want to avoid one thing specifically, and that thing is touching or making contact with any of the glitching fragmented structures. 
Because if you do that, your existence will literally start to crack and rupture, and then you'll start fading away. Like, you could touch one of those pyramids or one of those statues there and just start decoding and not exist anymore at all, in any way. It's happened before, and it's terrifying to think about what that might look like. Entities that we normally talk about here on the channel, like hounds and that kind of thing, they're not seen here as themselves, and it's thought that they wouldn't be able to survive anyway, but there actually have been glitchy prism and shape looking things in the sky that kind of resemble entities. Maybe those prisms are like cocoons that entities are made in for the back rooms? Who knows? Now it's said that entities have been seen no clipping here by accident, just like people do, but those entities have seemingly transcended and melted together with the broken's environment and have become these glitchy, warping, broken things that aren't bound by the laws of physics that you can see glitching around everywhere. And they'll just float and warp for the rest of existence. As of right now, no one knows the entrance or the exits to this horrifying level, which honestly makes it more terrifying because you have no idea how to avoid being sent here, and you also have no idea how to leave if you were sent here. Nice. But yeah, let me know your theories about this level in the comments. Is this level some sort of power location that the backrooms pulls power from to make entities and levels, or is it just another random glitchy corrupted level? Who knows? So, Backrooms level 360, at its simplest form, is a winding, foggy, concrete road that stretches out for an unknown distance. It might be infinite, but to be honest, we have no idea. The level is classified as a class 5 difficulty because it is very unsafe and unsecure and has multiple environmental factors that make it very unsafe. The long windy road that I just talked about is the bare bones part of the level and it's where you spawn in. It's kind of like a blank slate. It's just really liminal looking and mystifying and just a huge expanse of foggy concrete with lights shining down on it. The level starts to get dangerous when a person begins to walk on it and interact with it by touching stuff. And it does this through something called manifestations. So these things are reality bending and warping events that change the state of the road and all of your surroundings. So pretty much everything changes. Think of it like Thanos using the reality stone on you. That's virtually how it is. So far, none of these manifestations have been the exact same and they're normally uniquely different. Now, to give you an idea of what a manifestation might look like, I'm going to go over three cataloged ones right now. So this wanderer got to this level, level 360, from level 201 when they sat down on a patch of black sand to tie their shoe. Now once they were sent to this level, the road went from looking like it did at the beginning to looking like a very old and broken road with concrete potholes and cracks in it. The wanderer says that the rest of the surroundings looked like level 64, except there was no roof on it. Level 64 is an infinite house that changes its own layout constantly, by the way, if you didn't know. So this person said that there were pieces of furniture that were floating in the sky, pieces of stuff that was on the road, and it was pretty much like a huge house, but no roof and a road going through it. After they saw all that furniture and stuff, a heavy blizzard started on the level and it was so windy and icy that all of the surroundings were breaking and crumbling around this guy and the wanderer barely escaped to tell the tale. Manifestation 2 so this wanderer was on level 45 when she fell into its void there and tried to reach up and grab something and she ended up touching a light pole which took her here to level 360. Now unlike the first manifestation, this one had a perfectly fine road with no cracks and no potholes, but the road was curving through a big mountain area. The wanderer said that her skin was very dry and that the atmosphere was very hot, kind of like just a desert. The level kept getting hotter and hotter until she noticed a blindingly white light 
come through the hills and then kind of cover the entire level. And when the entire level cleared up and the white light went away, the level looked like a broken down road and it looked like it was being fixed up because there was abandoned trucks and signs and that kind of thing everywhere around. So it went from being a perfect road with no cracks or anything to being a broken down desert road. And the area around this new road was a deep red desert instead of the mountain that it used to be. This wanderer apparently found a community deep inside of this manifestation and they haven't returned since. So this person's level changed completely while she was on it. It went from that mountain road to a broken down desert one. Interesting. The last manifestation that I'll go over for this video happened when a wanderer came from level 404 and ended up here. His manifestation looked like a weird dirt path with strange trees surrounding it. The trees were in this huge forest and they were all colorful and that kind of thing. And some of the trees were actually flipped upside down completely and some of them were also floating above him in the sky. So it sounds like he might have had some spiked almond water or something earlier because this sounds crazy. But this wanderer was apparently in a bad mental state from level 404 and he never escaped his manifestation in level 360 and was never seen from again so drop a rip in the chat for this random guy but yeah as you can see most of these manifestations have some kind of road or path leading through a very different and strange environment we have no idea how the manifestations are chosen or if the level chooses them or what happens but we do know that some of them are more dangerous than others If you attempt to walk off the base road of level 360 while your manifestation is starting or before your manifestation starts, you'll actually go off and fall into a massive 400 deep black pit. And this pit could be full of entities or something. We don't really know. <laughs> All we know is that it's just a massive black void type pit on every side of this road. And you can fall into it if you stray from the path. So don't. There are also a couple of level exclusive entities that are very interesting to say the least that live here. The first one is known as the Living Cars. It's classified as a class 2 difficulty and it seems to be kind of just a sentient car. They're constantly driving throughout all of the roads on level 360. All of the manifestations tend to have a car of some sort and they're often seen with their headlights on. They have weird logos on them and they just seem otherworldly. Sometimes they'll just stop if they see you and then you can actually get into the car but once you get into the car you're kind of stuck in there because they go really fast like 200 miles an hour and if you stay in that car for long enough you'll begin to get headaches and you'll kind of start feeling like your head's pounding so you need to get out as fast as you can and the only way to stop the car is to find the emergency chain brake and pull it somewhere inside of it the next entity has been called the star in the distance and this entity is classified as a class 4 difficulty because it's extremely dangerous way more dangerous than the sentient car. The good news is it's really rare, but that's also pretty bad. I don't know. It looks like a glowing green ball that's just floating out in the distance. Like you can barely see it twinkling. If you do see this star ball thing, do not look at it because once you've started staring at it, it'll pull you towards itself and you will not be able to move. Like you're just kind of trapped in a levitating pose and it'll just be floating in the sky. And after this, it's thought that the orb releases some kind of radiation to consume its prey. So if you see that, just please look away. The last entity is a broad term for creatures here, and it's the shadowed beings. And this one is classified as a class five difficulty because they are really, really dangerous. And they're really, really prevalent all over the level. At first, these entities just look like pitch black humanoid shadow creatures that just resemble humans. But trust me, they are way more aggressive. They have six fingers on each hand and other strange things like wings and horns and that kind of thing. These shadow creatures normally hide just out outside of the lights beyond the road and they stare at you and stalk you before pouncing so just be careful where you're walking and avoid all dark areas if you can 
There are also some manifestations that are similar that I'll mention right now before the end of the video. Multiple people have claimed to see graveyards, shadow zones, and tundras. And these are the three really recurring types of manifestations that are kind of the same, but not really. And specifically, those shadow zones are extremely dangerous because that's where the most shadowed beings live. But the other ones, like the graveyard and the tundras, look creepy. There actually is a base on level 360, and I hinted at it earlier. It's called the Travelers of level 360. Little is known about them, but what is known is that there's around 30 people that live there. To enter this level, you can try to noclip through a road on level 9, or you can touch a street light on level 45. To exit, you can try to noclip into a concrete slab to be sent to level 69, or if you touch fire on the level, you'll be sent to level 666, which kind of sucks, but oh well. Level 404 is classified as class 0, and it has this super dope classification graphic on the wiki dot. The numbers 404 typically signify glitching, or the quote 404 not found pop-up thing you get when a website is deleted and you try to go to it. So as you can imagine, level 404 in the back rooms is a huge glitch area. Like there are physical glitches that you can touch that are just flowing through the level. Nice. Pretty much it's described as a visual representation of a computer hard drive breaking under the strain of too much data. It's also said that sometimes you can develop like a second consciousness inside this level and that you should quote cut it out with a sharp piece of glitch. So yeah, that's fun. When you're in this level, you can't think straight and pretty much nothing makes sense to you at all and you just think in an infinite circle of the same thoughts over and over again you can literally see lines of code and 3d glitches that collide into each other and you kind of feel like you're floating around through it all so pretty much it's just a huge error and nothing that happens here makes any sense my theory is that level 404 might represent a storage level for the back rooms like all the data and stuff could be stored there in glitch form or something, which adds to my theory that the back rooms is all part of the simulation. It all makes sense now. So to summarize, level 404 is a huge level full of glitches and errors that are visualized using strands of code and shapes, all while floating around in a white sky kind of a white sky. It's just glitches, but it's like brightly lit. I don't know, man. I don't make the rules. On this level, your mind shuts down and you start to forget everything you knew and just float away into all the glitches. But if I was there, I would simply not let myself lose my sanity. It's not that hard. Backrooms level 159 is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe and unsecure, very unsafe by the way, with a medium entity count. But the entities that are here can be pretty dangerous. The level itself looks like an old style American town that's around 1900 miles in size, or 3000 kilometers. So it's pretty big, like a really big town. For reference, Phoenix, Arizona is only 830 kilometers in size, and London is only 1700 kilometers in size. So it's literally twice as big as London. Cool. The architectural style of the town is a late 80s to early 90s American style, and most of the buildings here fit that theme. The ground is very flat, except for a few spots, and there are also a few spots with trees and shrubs dotted throughout the entire area. And all of the trees and stuff are dead because it's always snowy and the ground is frozen most of the time, with snowstorms being very common. This level actually seems to be always snowing, but the weird thing is it never gets deeper than four centimeters even though it's always always snowing no clue where the snow goes or how it doesn't accumulate anymore but it doesn't it also doesn't even matter if there are clouds in the sky or not because it'll snow either way no clouds daytime whenever which is pretty spooky if you ask me it hovers around freezing in the outdoor parts of the level, but when you're inside the buildings, it's typically around 10 degrees warmer, which isn't much warmer, but at least you won't freeze. The level has a wide range of normal entities that are found in other backrooms levels, like wretches, hounds, and that kind of thing. And there are also some very dangerous entities that are specific to this level only, and I'll get into those in the entity section of the video. But for now, I want to talk about the unique locations and and environments that this level has to offer uh, because they're insane. Like, literally, insane. Gas stations are the first location that I want to talk about, and these buildings should not be entered or even walked up to because of how dangerous the creatures can be that spawn inside of them. The shelves inside of these stores actually have some food and stuff on them, like real-life gas stations, but again, don't go in 
no matter how tempting it is. So playgrounds are the next location, and they look like your normal playsets from real life. Except these are not located inside of parks or fields, like you would see here. They're in completely random places, like on top of buildings or just right in the middle of the road. And no matter where they are, there's always tables and mulch surrounding them. And it's inside of these playgrounds that the snow melts on contact with the ground. No one knows why, it just does. The creation pits, or just the pits, are the next place in the level, and this is where it gets crazy. These are huge bunkers that have been found underground throughout the level. They were discovered because of cylinder-shaped air vents sticking out of the ground. And when they were entered, a strange discovery was made. These bunkers, or pits, are full of extremely advanced technology that's unlike anything anyone's ever seen before. There are fluid tanks that have weird creatures in them, there are computers that are self-sufficient and doing things on their own. These computers create entities. Yes, you heard that right, they create and produce entities. Almost like a 3D printer, but for biological stuff. After one of these entities is fully done and created, the pod of liquid that they were in will be launched out of the bunker into the sky, and then it'll crash somewhere else in the level. Interestingly enough, across this level there's been bones and full skeletons of primates just laying around or partially buried, which is very cryptic and dark if you ask me. Did the creator of this technology just wipe out all the primates that were here, or did they get primates from Earth to do experiments on? to create these entities? Who knows? The last two locations are pretty simple. One is the Forgotten Mall, which is a large mall with different off-brand stores inside of it that has clothes and that kind of stuff. And you can get these clothes, but you have to buy them, actually. And if you don't pay for them at the cash register, then they'll just disintegrate in your hands when you walk out the door. And lastly, there's the Plaque of Creation, which is a golden plaque located inside of a small outpost here that says, quote, We've made a magnificent discovery, but also have created a mind so horrifying, so powerful, that it could best the brightest we had to offer. As fate may also have it, we are likely dead. Though to the ones left behind, I have but one thing to say. Please don't fly too close to the sun. Uh, yeah. Whatever that means, I think someone messed up by creating these entities and technology, but uh, who knows. Now I'm going to talk about the specific ones to this level. Now there are six types of them. There are humanoid entities, semi-humanoid entities, non-humanoid entities, passive ones, actively malicious entities, or AMEs, and empowered entities. Humanoids are the rarest form to find here, and they seem to almost be human. Not quite, but almost. They have two legs and opposable thumbs, but they just wander around and they seem confused. Then there are semi-humanoid ones, and they're common here. They have the upper body or lower body of a human, but the upper or lower of an animal as well. And they can't talk or communicate, and they really seem awkward and unbalanced, almost like they're a mistake. Non-humanoid entities are ones with no humanoid traits. They hardly have any sentience, and they're aggressive. They're kind of like wild animals. Neutral entities are ones that don't just outright attack you the second they see you. And these are also pretty rare, sadly. Now, actively malicious entities, or AMEs, are ones that go out of their way to chase you, and their entire purpose is to attack you. Not very fun. Lastly, there are empowered entities, which are creatures with these supernatural powers that wanderers have come across. They can't really control these powers because they don't seem smart enough to be able to, but they definitely have them. Like, one could float, but they can't control where they float. Or one could lift certain items and not other items. It doesn't make any sense, but that's how it is. And all of these weird creatures were made from that technology in the bunkers, the computers, and the pods, which is really creepy to think about. There are two bases here. One is a Meg Outpost, and one is called Van Dyra. Meg Outpost has three people that permanently stay there, and the Van Dyra has 300 humanoid and semi-humanoid entities that stay there. Which does show that those semi-humanoids and humanoids are capable of forming society, which is really creepy because who knows how further they could develop. To enter this very strange level, you can open an ice-covered door from level 1 to be sent here, and to 
the exit, you can find a donut shop in the middle of town to be sent to level 11, which is what I would try to find instantly to avoid the half-human, half-monster entities here that want to eat my face. That's just me. Backrooms level 148, aka the living level, is classified as a class 5B, which means it's unsafe, unsecure, and has environmental dangers. Really bad environmental dangers. So just based off of its name, you can tell that this level feels almost like it's alive, because it has this very weird ability to change itself in shape, size, and even change all objects inside of itself. And this level makes those changes happen whenever it senses movement. Even movement as small as your footsteps can make the level warp and change itself. Now, you might be asking yourself, you know, what does this mean? Well, why does the level change itself? Well, no one really knows, of course, but the main theory is that this level is some sort of intelligent entity. And not only does the level have intelligence, it uses that intelligence to manipulate and actively do things with malicious or bad intentions. So it uses 100% of its intelligence to try to hurt wanderers that get sent here. One person even claimed that the level talked to them with an actual voice, but who knows if that's true, because people could just go insane in the back rooms and start hearing stuff but i think it is true you're about to hear why so there are two different states that this level can be in the first is called the basic state and the second is called the alarm state in this basic state the level looks like a bunch of randomly put together halls and open rooms and corridors that are made out of concrete or concrete blocks and some concrete staircases, as well as some random voids that are out of the walls, but pretty much it's just a labyrinth of claustrophobic concrete hallways. And an interesting note is that even in this basic state, things like Smiler repellent and other useful substances have no effect here. They don't even work. It's like the level suppresses them. The next state is the alarm state, and during this alarm state, the level is at its most dangerous part. This is when the entire thing is awake, and and it's causing the most chaos. If you remember when I said earlier that the level might be an entity with intelligence, yeah, this alarm state is when the entity wakes up. If you're running around the level or you're walking loudly, the entity will be able to sense your vibrations and will change the room or hallway or staircase into something dangerous and even deadly to try to trap you or unalive you. On top of this level being angry towards you and actively trying to unalive you during the alarm stage, the lights are also turned off. So, that's just fun. And it gets even worse. Just wait till the traps section of this video. The best thing to do during this alarm stage is to just sit down somewhere in the smallest and most enclosed space you can find. That way, the level can't hear your vibrations or your footsteps or anything, and then you can just wait it out. Both the basic state and the alarm state can last anywhere from a few hours to several days. So, it's advised that no one should come to the level without proper supplies. Or, you know, just... Don't come to the level at all, and you won't have to worry about it. As I said earlier, the level is called the living level, and it's for more reasons than what I just told you. Yes, the level can do even more than hunt you and try to change itself to hurt you even more. And I'm going to explain why right now. It can also feel things and communicate with you in weird ways. One documented way is that the level can write on its own walls in English to the Wanderer. When this happened, it was at its basic state and it wasn't attacking the Wanderer, so it's unknown why it tried to contact that person, but yeah. In another sick and twisted example of this level just being plain mean, it also manifests fake exits in its walls in the form of the Mimic Entity, which is just a fake door that can lead to a high fall or to a void where you're doomed to be there forever. And these doors are random and they're unmarked, and if you go in them, the Mimic Entity will consume you, uh, so I just recommend not opening any doors here. The level has no actual vision or eyes or anything like that, and it seems to only be able to find people and objects through vibrations. So your best bet is to move slowly and carefully and to make as little noise as possible to get out of here alive.
Now is the trap section of the video, and I'm going to be going over the specific level traps that this entity and intelligent thing tries to put you in. The first one is called the Flood, and it happens in random hallways and random rooms and corridors, but the level pretty much floods that hall or room with freezing cold water all the way to the ceiling with hopes of getting you stuck in it and drowning. So if you hear a rumble or see a rush of water coming, run the opposite way and get as high up as possible. The second trap is called the Squeeze and it's like those rooms that squeeze together slowly except on this level the walls and the ceilings and the floor all close in on each other to try to crush you this crush can happen in hallways and rooms so if it starts happening try to get out of there before you become a pancake the next trap is the swivel which is where the room or hallway you're in bends and curves like kind of a wringing out of a washcloth everything is distorted and curved and it can hurt you pretty bad if you're not careful Next is another dangerous trap where the level introduces mental issues by trying to control your brain and talking to you. Ugh. And then there's the fire trap where a huge section or the entire hallway you're in is set on fire. <laughs> so yeah, not fun at all but this might be the most innately dangerous level. There's one person of interest who's stuck on this level named Knox, and he's the one who discovered it in the first place. Now, he's not involved with any backrooms organization like Meg. He's just a guy who was unfortunate enough to get sent here and get stuck. Even though other people have been here and escaped, Knox can't. And since the escape is random, you have no choice over it. Interestingly enough, this level actually seems to talk to Knox more than any other person who's been here, which means the level is smart enough to develop a relationship, which is kind of cool, I guess. There is one base here called the Dome, and it's where Knox lives. Now, the Dome is accessed by tiny crawl spaces, which all lead to this small dome-shaped ceiling room. And like I said, this is where Knox stays, and if you can get there, you should be pretty safe. To enter this level, first off, you shouldn't. But if you can't help it, you have to go, you can no-clip through any floor of a basement type area and be sent here. And to exit, you have to accidentally be no-clipped out. You have no choice, it just randomly happens or it doesn't. And only a few people have been able to do it. So, good luck. 